You're about to dive into a text that's thick, and it can be hard to understand at times. It's by French philosopher Michel de Certeau. I want to take just a quick minute and summarize two of his main points for y'all. This is important. We're going to go back and use this throughout the rest of the semester, if you're in the prison class, to unpack how corrections really works, and how power works in general. In short, de Certeau is simply describing two different techniques of exercising power. A strategy is what you would come up with if you had all of the information available and if you had possession of a piece of land. You might think of this road in front of you as a good example. If you could scout the land and you knew that maybe there was a swamp or a patch of rocky ground in the area where the tactical shortcut arrow is right now, then you would probably build your road in the area that is flat and stable, even if the final road is longer and it's curved. It'll take you longer and it'll cost a little bit more, but if you really want a safe, secure route, you'll choose the long way. Now imagine that you need to cross this piece of land, but you're not welcome. And imagine that you don't have surveys and drone footage telling you that there's swamps in these areas. Chances are you'll decide to take the tactical route, straight through the center. Tactics rely on limited information, sometimes nothing other than our senses, sight, sound, smell, Tactics are also time-based. You'll have to move fast to avoid detection. Strategies, on the other hand, rely on accurate mapping of space, on accumulation of information, on weighing options, on controlling the risk. So the road is long and winding if you strategized because you don't need to rush. You're welcome on your own land. You can take your time. Strategies always operate from a position of already having access to power systems, whereas tactical advantages or tactical plans are designed around this idea of not having much access to power. So think about protest and run through this thought experiment again. Strategies are used by those in positions of power, the police. They map the area, gather information on where protesters are stationed, wrap themselves in protective gear and arm themselves with weapons, and then execute a planned attack or movement based on the control of a space. Tactics, on the other hand, are used by those without access to titles or to cash or to media or to public platforms. In short, mechanisms of power. Protesters in t-shirts with cardboard signs are using tactics. These folks rely on time, and you can think about how they can move from one block to another quickly, then wait for the police to realign their space-based strategy of containment, and then just move back to the block they were on the first time. Another example is how rabble-rousers can sneak into and burn down police stations. Certainly not every day, and in fact, not many days at all. But if they tactically play on time, if they wait for the right opportunity and then jump in when it arises... They might sneak in and light the cop shop ablaze before the strategies of space maintenance can adapt and crack back down. The powerful must focus on controlling space, and the so-called weak, from a perspective of access to power anyway, must rely on tactics of time. I mean, think about it. As you begin to own property, you naturally have to begin to think in a way that protects your property, whereas people that don't own much or don't own property don't have that to worry about because they have nothing to lose. You can think of owning a piece of land or managing a city and coming up with strategies to manage the population, to manage the waste and disposal, to manage the delivery of goods, to manage where things can be sold and where they cannot. All of these important jobs of city planner rely on the control of space. They might erect walls in certain spaces, a technology of strategic power that works to block time-based tactics because a wall is always there, whether it's day or night, whether it's tomorrow or last week. A wall is another good way to think about how simple these concepts De Certeau is putting out there really are. A wall, or a fence, is simply a way to tell somebody to keep in or to keep out. But you can't build one without making sure it's on your property, property which you have legal control over, or else it can just be torn down. Building a wall or a fence to protect property is an attempt to use space to control time. It's a strategy aimed at controlling a tactic. When you think about a prisoner in a cell, someone on the other side of that wall, there's always the possibility that time-based tactics can upset strategies of space control, as in examples of inmates using dental floss to file through steel bars, or of digging their way through a wall, as happened in Alcatraz. And our representations follow these same ideas. The two pictures at the bottom of the screen are from the Shawshank Redemption, a story where we get a similar image of strategy versus tactic. 
Prisons like Shawshank are operated by the controlling of space. But once in a while, a crafty inmate uses a time-based tactic to upset strategic power. In the Shawshank Redemption, the main character uses a miniature rock hammer to dig a hole in his own cell wall over the course of years. I want to end with a few examples that hopefully bring this idea home a little bit more. The first clip is from the original Longest Yard movie in 1974. The inmates are ultimately in a space, the prison, where their every move is under the control and supervision of the guards. This strategy seems difficult to beat. So the inmates flip the script, and instead of throwing a pass, they attack the guards. Ought to work again, right? <laughs> All right. One more time. On two. Ready? The inconsistent nature of power is obvious in scenes like this one. Tactical power and strategic power dance in a back and forth. Power is never stable. It must always be maintained. And that's something for us to remember throughout this class. This theme will emerge time and again. Here's one more clip from some people I would love to hang out with in Philadelphia. You can think of the police in any city as having access to superior institutions and systems of power. They're the paid heroes whom we arm and deputize with the power to arrest citizens for crimes. They have strategic power galore, information, ideas, plans, and tools for managing space. They have firepower and horsepower. They can shoot or outrun these little dirt bikes anytime they want, but they aren't doing anything that warrants shooting them, and their space-based maneuvers are upsetting the strategic high-speed chasing power that the police have. This is what their cruisers are designed for. I really love this example because it reveals the way that the streets themselves and the sidewalks in our cities are built so that these dirt bikers can play the game. They can effectively go around in circles until the police decide that they have better things to do than continue a pointless chase. And you'll see in just a second that that tactic proves successful. The police give up and drive away. See ya.